Welcome to the Spawn of Me podcast. I'm your host, Khalif Adams. What the deal be? I hope you're all doing well on this wonderful Thursday evening. It is a momentous day for us here in Bricago. Uh, we'll get into that information in a quick second about what that looks like and sounds like. But I want to give everybody a huge shout out and, and massive amounts of love for uh, coming and hanging out with us last week. We had a dope show talking about the kind of dice controversies that were happening and a quick update about that if you're thinking about the conversation that we had about the representation that was not necessarily there within the converse constructs of those social media tweets that went out uh i have been talking to those folks behind the scenes we're gonna have them on the show uh soon hopefully before dice and also i will be probably doing a round table at dice this year uh, talking about all the cool things that we can get our hands on and, and, and talk to all the biggest names and players in the industry uh, are rocking with us for that show. So keep your keep yourselves together. We got some really cool stuff coming on that end. Um, but yeah, today, or I should say this week, Monday, was our sixth year of existence. We've been putting out shows for six long years, six strong years. Um, and, uh, it was interesting. I was so busy doing work stuff that I couldn't get, uh, my hat, my head around the fact that we had done so many shows. This is episode 319, uh, of Spawn on Me. And it's been a huge endeavor and it's been fantastic to be able to rock with all of you here in Bricago and building up our community as strongly as we have. So massive amounts of love to all of you at home, but this week it's not about anniversary stuff. We'll talk about that later at the end of the show. This week, it's all about the future and kind of the current state of gaming and streaming specifically. Um, we have none other than such an amazing guest to be able to talk about that this week. We have the CEO and co-founder of Lightstream. We have Stu Grubbs rocking with us this week. <laughs> what the deal be, Stu? How are you doing? I hope that you are doing well out here in these wonderful 2020 streets. How are things? <laughs> things are wonderful uh thanks for having me on the show yeah, yeah. and it is it, it is cold isn't it <laughs> oh no doubt no doubt no no okay. doubt about that at all um for, so one of the reasons that i wanted to bring you on was i came across this fantastic uh article that was on one of the stream elements blog pages um mm -hmm. and i know that light see light stream and and stream elements and arsenal are doing all these wonderful things together um under these multi umbrellas that 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 kind of um everyone sits under um and it was fantastic to talk about you know not only the current state of where streaming is going but where we're kind of seeing things evolve um we're going to dig into that part of the conversation for sure and i think a lot of folks okay. at home are really excited about that but the first thing i want to get into is give the folks at home a little bit of information about you about how you started in this industry how you've kind of grown into this this place of prominence owning owning live stream and getting getting a, a big company like this off the ground uh, so give the <laughs> folks at home uh some information about you uh, I mean, the short version is, I think, very similar to just about anybody else who's watching. I mean, we started playing when we were kids, right? Yeah. And um, I think I got interested in the competitive scene uh, in high school. I was not good enough to play uh, at that level, but, you know, I did my Cal, Cal M, Cal I days and Counter-Strike and that kind of thing, and but never was good enough to hang with the big dogs. So I found myself really focused on what hardware gave you a competitive edge. Mm. And so I started writing about that with a group of friends. Um, eventually I get invited to to join them in building something called gotfrag.com back oh, in the day. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's many, many people that were part of that. Um, and I was one of them. And I met most of my longtime friends from there. And uh, yeah, we wrote about, um, obviously the main site wrote about, com you know, competitive esports at the time. And uh, we wrote about competitive, you know, hardware that could give you that advantage. And so we were, we were always looking at different hardware products in the space to see, you know, how they stacked up and, and what could give you that edge. Um, and then over time, you know, I ended up working for a company called Asatec, which did liquid cooling for PCs. Have you ever seen the Corsair H50, H70, uh, the NZXT Kraken? I worked yeah. with the NZXT guys to build that product. Um, then I was head of global marketing for SteelSeries for a while, where we did 
bunch of product launches every year of some really great things. I was always really, uh, I was excited to work on that brand. It was a dream come true. Um, really enjoyed my time there. And they've done a, like amazing things in the last couple of years, especially. I love, love the stuff they've been putting out. Yeah. And um, about five years ago, I had just left Steel Series. I wanted to try my hand at my own thing. And a friend called me and said, I have this idea to control broadcast software through a web browser. <laughs> and, uh, and his prototype was basically a website that could control elements of OBS. So, you know, you're, you're a busy broadcaster. You're trying to be an on-screen talent and your own technical lead and all these things. And his idea was, what if somebody could remote control OBS through a web browser so that you could have one of your mods do all this stuff. And, you know, the more we toyed around with OBS, um, you know, it was easy to see that it was a very powerful piece of software, but, um, very technical, even for technical people. Uh, and there was nothing really where you could just log in, drag and drop, go live and be up and running, telling your story, whatever that may be in a matter of minutes, as opposed to weeks of watching YouTube videos and reading tutorials and that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and so that's how, that's how, uh, I mean, at the time it was called Infinicine, but that's how Lightstream was born. We wanted to put advanced production tools in the hands of a beginner, make it easy to get up and start. And we, and we wanted you to spend more time storytelling than fixing your broadcast software. Yeah. So, uh, long answer to a short question. No, no, no. We <laughs> love, we love long answers on the show. Uh, that's never a thing that we shy away from. Um, and that was a great, a great answer to a, to a short question. Um, it's interesting to hear you talk about the kind of um, coming at it from a perspective of saying, you know, uh, you know, being a player of games and being a consumer of video game content, and then kind of transitioning into being a person who's making tools for those folks. What are some of the kinds of initial conversations when you were having the beginnings of Affinity and now Lightstream um, that were the main kind of like uh, flag flagpole points that you want to kind of stick in the ground and say, this is the thing that we want to tackle that no one else is doing and something that something that we know will kind of change the game in a real way. Yeah, I, th I think that um, I think that comes back to something we used to talk about at Steel Series. Um, and in other companies, but you know, in Steel Series, we made peripherals, and a peripheral is one a very personal thing, uh, especially when you're playing at a high level. Uh, but two, it it needs to, it should never cause you pain. You know, it should never cause you discomfort. It should be a natural extension of your body. And so, in a way, you're trying to design a product that's so good that you forget who made it and how it's made what shape it is it's just a natural extension and in a similar way i think when we thought about lightstream is if it's really easy then the technology hides and there's a sort of it hides as much as it can and something as technical as live streaming what is that <laughs> there's a window that just popped oh, up you. out of nowhere that's, you. <laughs> Got it. that's what happens when computers just do what they want technology doing what it wants to do sure <laughs> i thought that was on my end i was like oh, no, no no you're good <laughs> uh, at any rate um I, you know, I think that a good example is like your phone. You take a picture with your phone and about a thousand calculations happen that you have no idea what they're doing, but what they're doing is they're measuring the light in the room. They're oftentimes measuring the depth of field. They're oftentimes measuring the content of the color palette and a number of other things so that when the final image is rendered, that you look like you're a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so our, our thought was, could you log in? And there's advanced production tools like being able to bring on a guest without having to use uh, you know, Discord or Skype or whatever it was at the time, could you uh, bring in remote feeds? So could you and I produce a show together where the community can see your perspective and my perspective side by side? But that wasn't hard to set up. And um, even though we're in different, you know, we're not in the same studio, we're in different parts of the country. Um, you know, could you produce together where one person is doing the creative and the other person is doing the on-screen talent? And so you end up in this area where it's like, can we give these advanced production capabilities you see on some of the higher end streams or TV and really make them so simple that a beginner could do it. And so that's, that's one of the big stakes we drove in the ground. And I think the second one was, you know, if we're going to start from scratch, uh, which is a big undertaking as it is, could we do this in a way that provides new creative possibilities like that split screen streaming, like the cloud-based stuff, like what we're doing with IRL is a good example of that vision fully realized yeah. where people are out in the world with a cellular backpack and they still have a full cloud-based production. I don't know if you've seen the stuff that like Das Valdez does mm -hmm. with the space flashes. And he's been using us lately to do some really crazy stuff that, that uh, SpaceX recently uh, exploded a rocket on purpose. 
and <laughs> because they wanted to test the dragon capsule's ability to you know reach uh to escape that explosion and protect the crew yeah. and anyway das is out in the middle of the ocean on a boat in four to five foot swells using a cellular bonded connection streaming the light stream and he's got all of his graphics he's got a mod at home who's running the production remotely and i'm like this is why we built this i mean oh. this right here is why we built this and so uh, you know, those are the two big things we want to do. New creative possibilities, but put those in the hands of a beginner. I mean, those are the stories that me as a tech head, and then also as a person who is learning and thinking about streaming in a different way, because again, like, I think the, and we'll dig into this conversation about, you know, where things are going and kind of the trends that we see right now. Um, but as a person who's trying to figure out good ways to change the way that even podcasting is, is shared on a streaming platform yeah. in a way and thinking about it in more of a term of like, this is a production that you need to have. This is not just you being able to say, I'm talking to a person on a Skype call, uh, but you need to be able to have something visually uh, appealing that people want to be able to kind of see. When you get the kind of list of features that you're trying to build into Lightstream and to all the other tools that you're going to be putting out into the world, What's the conversation like with the folks in your circles uh, who are also doing the work of being content creators as well? I'm sure there are folks who work at who work at the company who are doing that work. I know I am Brandon. Uh, Matt, shout out and love to you uh, is one of the folks who I think of automatically when I think of, of all of you and doing that work. Are there other folks in that space that are giving you the, hey, this is the thing that we need now uh, part of that conversation? Oh, definitely. You know, one of the things we did really early on, which very unique at the time with uh we were in beta and we realized you know we needed to be able to talk to anybody using the product at any time and so we started providing live chat support and it's something that we kept with even though we have thousands of creators now using the software but um that channel became probably the number one source of feedback and ideas and you know i think when you're working on it every day of course everyone on our team from the engineers to the designers are thinking a you know a million miles an hour about all the cool things that could be done and one of the jobs is to you know provide focus and, and for us all to you know temper the excitement with you know what's going to be most impactful for our creators today but i would say that you know uh that channel that direct conversation we were always having with the community uh the community that we're from you know we're all gamers um you know a lot of the team streams um you know a lot of us don't i know i'm never going to be famous on the internet <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but those that do you know provide a lot of um feedback into that product for sure um and and back in the early days i think the beginning it was Hey, uh, I have this thing that I always do in OBS or in XSplit. Why don't you have this yet? And we're like, yeah. So we had to get to, you know, we, you know, what's called feature parity, right? The, yeah. Which is this, you know, and so, um, so in the beginning it was pretty easy. It was like, well, if it's, you know, if it's over there, we should probably have it over here. Um, but, um, when we really started getting into say the IRL stuff, for instance, you know, I, I remember talking to Gunrun uh year one or two of light stream mm -hmm. and he was just starting to toy around this this concept of irl streaming and building the backpack and he was still at twitch at the time and all that he's like can you do this this and this and i was like <laughs> not yet and how many people are actually going to use that and then you know lo and behold a few years later we actually um you know said you know what this is a community that i think is big enough now uh and also we are more capable of serving them well uh so let's let's see what we can do about putting together like an awesome IRL plan but yeah it's always been always been community driven discord's constantly giving us a ton as well yeah so, i'm i'm sure that the discord is is always on fire when it comes to yeah. giving you ideas and thoughts about how yeah whether, i mean whether it's support for the things that aren't quite working as well as they could right now or whether it's people with just crazy ideas on what we could do cuz i mean we are you know one of the first of its kind and there's there hasn't been uh you know a full cloud-based studio like this and it took a long time to get right but now that it is people are going oh yeah i could do this and, and we're getting some pretty pretty cool ideas and i think you'll be excited to see what kind of things we come up with in the next couple of years yeah yeah i mean one of the things that i remember specifically because i've been you know as a, as a content creator you're constantly looking for that magic bullet that will do all the things that you need to do do it well make you more efficient make you more proficient in being able to uh be entertaining so you don't have to think about the things that you're doing you just yeah. make them go 
um, one of the things before I had this set up was, um, you know, with the new consoles who, that came out, the Xbox One X and the, the PS4 at the time was the ability to stream directly from a console. And the yep. ability to be able to do that work um, without having a, a PC to be able to have to uh, do the heavy lifting on that end. One of the things that when I first heard about when you were kind of thinking about making the next step with Lightstream that I thought was going to be revolutionary. And I'm still uh, glad I'm super glad you're here because I want to bug you about it is the conversation around console streaming being a thing uh, that was going to be huge in and of itself. And then all of you jumping in uh, to the boat with the mixer folks and figuring yeah. out ways to be able to put your overlays and things in the cloud. What is the, first of all, what was the kind of conversation uh, that you can share with us around the decision to do that? And then two, how, how has that kind of panned out? Has that been a thing that you're seeing a lot of adoption about that? And I read the reason I ask is because I've always thought that the industry was going to grow exponentially once someone kind of tackled this particular thing. You know, the folks mm -hmm. who don't have PCs and the folks who are being able to stream from their consoles, but didn't have the production value that someone with a PC did. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like this was going to be the thing that was going to blow open the doors for streaming culture in a lot of ways. What, what are your, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, how that process has worked and then what's the, been the, the adoption of all that? Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing, you know, to talk about, you know, console streaming really expanding the market in a massive way, you know, um, capture cards are an incredible technology and, uh, but you know, they are expensive and they, and I think they will be for a while. They, they, they're not easy. It's not easy to do what those things do. Yeah. Um, but when Xbox decided to add native streaming to the Xbox, it, it, it did create a lot of streamers, um, in our conversations over the years with, you know, mixer Xbox, um, it is uh, massive numbers in terms of the number of people that are using native Xbox streaming. Forget forget live streams involvement. Just just what Xbox put on that. Uh, when it, whether it comes to Twitch or Mixer, the Xbox capability there. Um, it is a significant number of people that own an Xbox to say, you know what, I'm going to try streaming because it's no financial investment. They already own the Xbox, and mm -hmm. they get the. There's no financial hurdle. There's no technical hurdle. It's a couple button presses. So, um, I think the numbers recently were that um, you know Mixer has as, almost as many channels, active channels as, as Twitch does. Wow. And no, they're not pulling the viewership numbers, but these are native. They're largely native broadcasters. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're mostly Xbox streamers. Huh. So it gives you an idea of just how many people are are willing to try. You know, give streaming a shot. Um, and yeah, there's time and. Uh, time and effort needed for all those new streamers to grow. And so, um, you know, I know people like to naysay the different platforms and whatnot, but the reality is, is that the market as a whole is growing and that's good for everybody. It's good for everybody as, as brands look to invest in the space and support streamers. It's good for everybody in terms of creators supporting each other. The more people are consuming the content, which is good for every creator. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's becoming more mainstream to watch these kinds of live streams. Uh, this is, you know, that means that it's normal consumer behavior to watch a live stream, yeah. which is great for creators. You get a bigger audience that's like, yeah, this makes sense. This is quote unquote normal to be, you know, watching this uh, as opposed to TV or Netflix or whatever. And so, uh, I think all of those things are true, but yeah, no, the console streaming uh, has definitely expanded the market in a big way, and it's been cool to see. But you're right. I mean, the big problem was uh, all these streams tended to look the same. Yep. I mean, the Xbox could only capture the game. Eventually, they added support for USB webcams, right? And But then even that could only be positioned in, you know, one <laughs> of the corners. So, you know, they Xbox, uh, Microsoft, actually, to be more specific, came to us uh, i believe it was shortly after one of the twitch cons maybe one no it was definitely two yeah twitch con two in san diego mm -hmm. um and you know they said we'd love we'd love to talk to you about something we noticed that um you know everything's in the cloud so does that mean that we could have an xbox instead of streaming straight to the platform stream to you first where you would add graphics and stuff and and what you've built and then send that back to us Hmm. And, um, you know, to, to a platform, if we were to have one. And at the time, they hadn't told me yet that they had bought Beam. Right, right, right. So a couple little fun side stories. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in the original pitch of Infinicine, the very first year of the company, when we went to go get investment, I stood on a stage in the House of Blues in Chicago and pitched hundreds of investors at an event. And the last two slides said, imagine a day 
where this mess and I showed a living room with a capture card and a laptop and all this stuff. <laughs> you could literally just have an Xbox stream to the cloud and Lightstream or Infinity would stream this on to the platform without any additional need for any additional hardware than your Xbox. Um, and so when Microsoft came to me two years later uh, and said, Hey, we're thinking that this. It's like <laughs> funny you should say. <laughs> and, another, and another funny thing is that Matt, who Matt and uh, uh, James, who founded Mixer, uh, we went through TechStars, which is a program for startups. Mm -hmm. um, Matt and James called me when they were Beam and they were trying to get into Seattle TechStars. Uh, and so I knew them from you know when they were just getting started. Uh, it would only be a few loans later that Microsoft would purchase them, but yeah, it's a. Uh, madness those young kids man just like yeah, rolling through yeah. that stuff and being brilliant and yeah. that's yeah. you know where they landed my smart, goodness smart young men uh for sure and there are a lot of people on that team uh just besides just the two of them but yeah. uh matt in particular um was who i talked to at the time and i remember sitting on the call with him just talking shop about video and um just just crazy smart <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i think i remember meeting cool. them at either a TwitchCon or maybe it was like an E3 and just kind of walking up on James and James like totally unassuming, brilliant cat. And it was nice to be able to just like walk up to him and talk to him and say like, this is madness. Like how the hell did you figure yeah. out that this was yeah. going to be the thing? And he was just like, Hey, he was like a thing that I knew was going to wind up working. And yeah. it was great to be able to talk to him about that stuff and get, getting to see that you were definitely knocking on that door way earlier uh, than a lot of folks were <laughs> on a different side of that door. I think, honestly, um, you know, I think there was a place for, uh, beam at the time and they really quickly identified that. I mean, the low latency aspect of it, as well as some of the other things that they did early on, I think really set them apart. And, um, I really believe in that, in that kind of streaming and, and I believe in mixers future success because of that. Um, and, and a number of other things they're doing, but in particular, what I think was really, um, sharp about what they identified was then was the need to reduce the latency in a conversation between you and the audience. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it was, you know, more about the creative process. You know, nobody was building better tools, for creators, I should say nobody was building um, more approachable tools for the creators, everything else out there was either highly technical, or it was somebody else trying to build another platform. If you remember, at one point, it was Hitbox, Smashcast, well, what became Smashcast, Azubu, Hitbox, uh, you know, a number of other small platforms is Picardo and in Europe, all the Asian platforms. Mm -hmm. And it was just flooded. And then, and we looked around the room and said, but where are all the tools? You know, who's <laughs> going to build better video tools? And so we got excited. We got really excited about that and still are very excited about that. Um, but you asked uh, about kind of Lightstream's involvement in that. And I think that that was really where we saw our opportunity, um, not just in partnering with Microsoft, but in the unique ways that cloud can be leveraged to um, really do something unique um, and really provide something for the community that allowed the Xbox, native Xbox streamers to see a stream of a professional, mm -hmm. you know, an experienced professional say, I want that. And then be able to recreate that in something like us uh, has been really special. And um you know, it was supposed to be just a few creators. They thought Microsoft thought only a few people will try this thing out. And I mean, it just kind of blew out all expectations. We have thousands of creators a day going live at any given time uh, using the native feature of the Xbox. Um, and it's, it's been, it's just been uh, really fulfilling to see after a lot. Of so it's been, yeah, we got more to come too. Uh, oh, know, yeah. the Arsenal stuff is part of that. We've got something else coming this year that we're really excited about. Um, well, hold, hold any, hold any of those things until yeah. the end of the show. Yeah. You, you can okay. definitely like give, give the roundup of all the cool things that are going to be happening um, around the corner. This show is flying, uh, by the way, and we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> uh, we're hanging out with Stu from Livestream. We'll be right back after this. All right, so you're killing it. You're doing a fantastic job. Uh, you're doing you're doing a wonderful job. Um, let's see. I got some music just running in the background. Um, yeah, I would say we probably have like another twenty minutes. We'll do a little bit of the conversation about the the deck parts. Um, we'll do that real real fast. And
and Mixer on the long run is gonna, you know, it has a big advantage, big advantage. Um, you know, and uh, the last I would say is YouTube gaming. Yeah. Um, the fact is, is that nowhere in the world do people consume more gaming content than on YouTube. Yeah. Full stop. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean, VOD is a monstrosity. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you add, when you tell a creator, why are you streaming in a different place than you're putting up your videos? It's a pretty compelling sales pitch for them. So I think every every platform has a pretty unique, and then Twitch, of course, just gets to be the, uh, you know, the um, the king that's been around for a while. Right. And so, you know, and they built an awesome community and they've they've been gaming first for a long time. I think, you know, uh, that gives them an, a, another advantage as well, uh, in addition to the massive market share that they command. But each of these platforms has got a unique reason why I don't think any of them could be counted out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you know, another thing that Facebook does that I've learned is that because um, we've got, you know, uh, we know a number of the streamers that are on the platform and none of them has told us this directly, sure. but I've seen them stream on multiple platforms. And so therefore, what I guess what I've learned is that the contracts aren't exclusive. That's so sign interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen creators on Facebook who get to stream part time on Facebook and part time on Mixer or part time on Twitch. Huh. And so Facebook's not just paying them to stream on their platform, but they're not being uh, exclusive about it. You know, however you feel about that, I was going to say, you know, but they're not they're not being uh, too strict about it. And that is pretty attractive if I'm a content creator. Oh, absolutely. I mean, hearing that so, right now, I'm like scratching my beard like, hmm. <laughs> Like, because we're partnered that. here um, and it would be fantastic to be able to kind of spread the wealth around and kind of grow that ecosystem into multiple places at once with Restream and things like that. But it's also one of those things where um, it feels like it's a semi walled garden in terms of you don't hear a lot of people kind of gloating about the time that they stream on it or even consume uh, the content there. But you see so many kind of heavy hitters. I always think of good game bro. When I think of Facebook gaming, like those two mm. names together, I always think of, and, and the, I think of, uh, I think of darkness. Yeah. He's done really well. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's yeah, right. He, I forgot. I mean, he'd, darkness be, was over there. He, he'd become massive. Yeah. Facebook <laughs> was the best thing that ever happened to him. I mean, like he, I mean, he was doing well before. Yeah. He is huge now and it's been super cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all those things that, especially because you have your brand pages, you can connect those things to, you have all those things that yeah. are this ecosystem that continues to work. And you're right. The thing I did absolutely find interesting was the fact that with all the controversies that we've seen surrounding Facebook, that one, they're continuing to push that, that part of their vertical in a real way. And also that people are still willing to kind of make that transition over, but hearing about the not necessarily exclusivity that you can still rock with that. That's a, that's huge. Yeah. That's and some huge. of those creators are using that to their advantage places, but what they do is they, you know, they stream a number of hours of Facebook gaming, then they take a break and then they go stream a number of hours of a different kind of content. Like maybe they only play Fortnite on Facebook, but they play variety on Mixer or some, you know, some combination like that, or just chatting on another platform. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, Facebook's got billions of people on the platform. Yeah. So at some point, people are going to watch something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. growing. It's growing. I mean, it really is. And the, and they're they're really working on making that viewing experience uh, better all the time. So it's it's been pretty interesting to watch each of them uh, really make make strides, and they've all got pretty unique advantages to compete with each other. Yeah. I think you should start podcasting because you just gave me the perfect transitional lob over to uh, the next topic <laughs> that I wanted to talk about, which was the growth of non-gaming content on streaming platforms has been mm -hmm. pretty huge in the last quarter, especially on Twitch. Um, a, a statistic that I saw that really kind of threw me for a loop, and I'd seen a little bit of this conversation happening over the past uh you know, like two quarters, the beginning of uh, 2019 and kind of moving into 2020 was just how many folks were digging and jumping into just chatting and ASMR streams as a huge thing. As a podcaster, you know that that is a huge thing for us to be thinking about and saying, hey, if folks are kind of digging into this space, how can we be a part of that? What's been the kind of thought process in, in, that you and the crew have been either kind of just looking at this data and saying, wow, you know, putting your hand to your head and being like, this is an interesting thing. Or, you know, is this something that you might've seen coming down the line of saying, yeah, this particular vertical in, in which we see this content happening is really growing and is growing in, in, in big ways. Yeah, I think, I think this is surprising to 
people who traditionally only watch Twitch. Mm. And so to see something new coming onto their platform is, um, it seems strange and new and all of that. Um, you know, I think that those of us who, you know, one are maybe a little bit older and have been listening to podcasts since they were invented, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, two people have been watching some of the foreign streaming markets mm -hmm. where, you know, this, this is actually what most people are watching. Huh. I mean, honestly, like if you go like, uh, I mean, if you know about Korean street, like everyone knows about mukbang now, yep. uh, if you look at, um, like I said, live podcasts, recorded podcasts, uh, casual eating, <laughs> yeah, yeah, casual eating, um, IRL and the birth of that has just grown like crazy. Yeah. Um, I, and there's all kinds of variations of that from, um, you know, unique action sports, uh, in remote locations to just simply walking around downtown Tokyo. My friend David did recently. And so, you know, there are, um, variations of this all over the place that kind of get lumped together under just chatting. Yeah. But, you know, I think the reality is, is that it shouldn't be too surprising that we like to feel a little bit more personally connected to the people that we're watching on the internet. Yeah. Um, you know, so many streamers I think can talk about that time where, you know, yeah, they're playing the game, but the part that they seem to get the most engagement is when they're between games, you know, when they're in the lobby. Yeah. And so it's like, I get finally a chance to talk to my favorite streamer. He's maybe going to see, you know, he or she's maybe going to see my message yeah. and maybe respond to that. And uh, so, yeah. Um, and, you know, and honestly, a lot of the content is coming out. You know, I'm not an AS fan. Uh, it's just not for me. I, even, you know, <laughs> I, I can't stand when people chew with their mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> so mouth sounds are not my thing. It's kind no. of, yeah. So it, it's, um, but I do understand that a lot of people there are, and it's interesting. Um, and I, and I get it in that sense, uh, even if it isn't for me. Um, just chatting, though, it kind of lines up with who I've always been. I've always loved podcasts. I've always loved audiobooks. I've always loved you know it, the engagement of that sort of content. Yeah. And so I wasn't I wasn't terribly surprised. Yeah. Um, but it has what I was surprised at is just the sheer rate at which it dominated Twitch as soon as it appeared. Yeah. I mean, it is. Like, it's been huge. How long ago was it? Like two, like a year and a half, two years. That it like really started to like explode like this. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of like, who were the folks who kind of helped to usher that part of the game in, in a real way. And um, of course I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on it now because of course I'm doing a live show, but it's, but it's one of those things that I remember. I mean, day nine's a probably a pretty good example. Yeah. Yeah. Day nine. Absolutely. Um, I remember super, it was funny because I used to watch super late night. Uh, just chatting streams. So that was when it seemed like, uh, you know, folks who folks who are a little bit older as well. Um, <laughs> you used to remember when TV had like its normal programming and then like towards the end of the night, it would get a little <laughs> bit more risque uh, yeah. and, and some other kind of content would probably kind of pop up into the world. Um, and I remember the rotisserie on an infomercial. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ron, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for the Ron Popeil of, of Twitch at this point to see who's going to be that person to, to do that work. Um, but it was really interesting to see like how that transition has happened. And then, you know, people are like making their streams, just, uh, just chatting streams. I know, um, uh, that bronze girl, like she has a fantastic, just chatting stream that she does all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like fantastic content. She's just hanging out, talking to her chat. Um, do you feel like there are going to be some technological advances that happen that are going to affect the just streaming or the kind of podcaster or the you know the kind of talking head um streamer in the future i know it's one of those things that we're again looking for whatever those bullets will be to make those things more uh visually appealing and, and more uh welcoming to people but is there anything that you that you, you're thinking about in the work you do that would help to benefit folks in that way i mean you kind of just invited me because you said in the work that i do so i will say that i think this is is pretty nuts. Um, yeah. and what I mean by that is when we watched Doss do the um, another launch that he did, he sent, he shipped uh, two live views and cameras. He couldn't make the launch himself down to a friend of his who did the on-site stuff. And then huh. he set up separate scenes with him at home at his desk. 
And every time the signal lost out because of a cellular connection, he was able to take over commentary. So he was basically pulling off what a TV station does, where you have the news anchor at the desk, a reporter out in the field. Yeah. And he was doing all of that with Lightstream for, you know, part of our IRL plan is you know, 99 bucks a month. He's doing that all from this, like... And, and so I just like that was the kind of stuff that I think is really going to change how IRL gets used. You're going to see people running podcasts where they have quote unquote reporters out in the field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. I think another interesting thing is um, we've, we haven't seen somebody do it yet. And I'm really excited for somebody to do it. But we have this thing called uh, Green Room in yes. studio. And so I can send you a link, right? And when you open that link, I can now bring your camera and microphone into studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can do this with up to uh, eight guests. And so you can start to build a, you know, a multi-stage podcast with different guests waiting on different scenes, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I think is more interesting, what we haven't seen somebody do, uh, and this is where I was going, is uh, have people um, subscribe or donate to be brought onto the show. Mm. Like bring it, bring your community onto the show. And so, you know, it, what that reminds late night TV shows where people would like call in. Yep, and you know, you remember Love Line? Like, oh people, yeah, absolutely. We were kids. Yeah, <laughs> we were totally. Kids. Yeah, so like, like that when people are like long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <bring a lot laughs> of the and the cool part is, is that if you don't want to exchange Discord information, or Skype information, you just send them this link and say, "All right, you got you got five minutes. Don't say anything weird on my stream. But let's talk." <laughs> <laughs> or you get <laughs> like, the cut. Yeah, absolutely. You no, know, or you get or you get the cut. And so I think that those are make um, really dynamic. Uh, live just chatting shows really fun, especially when you're bringing up the community. Um, but as far as other technological things, you know, I think one of the beauties of just chatting though is the simplicity. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's one of the reasons that like people, it's it doesn't feel so um, like I might miss something any minute. It's like listening to those old radio shows in the sense that I decide to go get some water or take a bathroom break or whatever. It's not like oh, I've missed all the action. Whereas in a game stream, you always feel a little bit of pressure to keep watching just in case the really cool moment happens. Yeah. Um, so there's a beauty in the simplicity of just sitting and hanging out with somebody that just chatting. Um, it feels more living room, right? It feels yeah. more like we're just sitting around a coffee table. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah technological advances beyond the describing, I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, well, how about you? Do you think that there's something that like as a, as a podcaster, like what would you like to see the industry you know, provide for you as a creator? I mean, it's interesting. And thank you for asking that. Cause it's, it's a thing that I think about often when trying to figure out how to make this show look even better than what it usually does, because it's just really hard to kind of wrap your mind around what one, the user wants to what they think is actually visually appealing and, and engaging, but it is also most of the stuff that I need is on a technical like infrastructure way. Like I need better video feeds. I need better audio feeds to be able to pull in folks like, like how I'm pulling you in through discord now to make sure that all those things are as tight as possible. I love the idea that you had uh, about the kind of on deck circle and you bring mm-hmm. people on for that stuff. I have an idea for a game show that I wanted to do that. I don't think anybody has done on Twitch yet. Uh, or, or is done on a streaming service. And I I still want to get that off the ground this year. Um, but I feel like right now, the thing that is the most important is alongside the visual presentation of being able to take that with you everywhere. Um, and then using that wherever you can to be able to do something on the fly. Uh, something that I would love to be able to do with a mobile device or some of some, some of that stuff. Um, you know, I mean, you know, that we let light stream does that. Oh no, I know. Oh no, I know. Oh, I definitely know. Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely we been test, paying. We should test your game show idea at the live stream. Off. I think it'd be fun. Let's get a bunch of people together, buzzers and everything. I would, I would love to do it. I, my, my, the, the idea is a little bit closer to something that we've already seen on ESPN. So if you're familiar okay. with Around the Horn, yeah, um, I want to yeah, do yeah, the yeah, gaming yeah. version of Around the Horn. <laughs> um, and I've been trying, I've this been, great. yeah, and I've been looking for people to work with to, to get that thing done. And it's still, it's still in process of trying to figure out how to build it all out, but I think it will be super dope. Cause then it, again, it like showcases the streamers, it showcases the content and it builds up, yeah. um, ways that you can engage with folks in good ways. And then everyone gets love at the same time. Um, but we could talk about that off, off stream at some point, but, sure um, it's almost time. We're almost running out of time and it's been flying. Um, one of the things that I absolutely adore about the work that you all have been doing has been streamers have had a hard time 
um, pitching themselves to PR, to brands, to other folks in the space in the gaming industry that they want to connect with. Um, and you folks have bought, have built out, I think, honestly, one of the best analytics tools for streamers in Arsenal. Um, I think it's top notch and hands down the best one on the on, on the market right now. It is beautifully done. the The aesthetic of it is is fantastic, and it looks great. And it gives people the ability to package up themselves in a way, in a real way, and give the, give folks that information um, as quickly as possible. What was the conversation when you decided to kind of dig into building that that part of the, the business out? <laughs> Well, I mean, full disclosure, uh, that's not built by Lightstream. Um, oh, I thought that that was totally under that umbrella. No, no, no. It is ours. It is ours. Okay, okay, it okay. is part of us. So well, I want to give credit where it's due. Okay. So the the original idea um, was come up with by another Twitch streamer named Scarfino. Uh, oh, if you know Reed. Yes. And so Reed years ago was trying to showcase his numbers to brands. And he's like, there is no good place for me to get my historical data, show my growth rate. Like, like how am I supposed to show these brands that I'm worth, you know, being sponsored? Mm -hmm. uh, and so he started developing this idea of aggregating data across Twitch for different streamers. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, he called a couple friends, um, uh, Taylor, who's actually in Chicago right now. He's, we're, we're working on something new together, so he's visiting. Um, but and uh guy joe and um and another friend of theirs and they started building what became arsenal uh and at first it was supposed to be just for twitch and then they started tracking more platforms uh i think they worked on it for two years yeah and um late last year uh well summer of last year you know we started talking about lightstream as a whole and we said you know we've done this thing where you know, we, all the things I was talking about before, we've made it easy uh, to a certain extent or as easy as it can be, right? Uh, we put advanced production tools in the hands of a beginner. We found an awesome partner in Microsoft and it's kind of our ideal use case with the, you know, console streaming. We're going to launch this IRL thing, but what's like, what's the next part of the creator's journey? How do we support the whole, like, chain of events? You know, where you go from, first, I just want to stream, you know, time to first stream, time to your ideal stream where you've really got it all pretty. And the next thing you need to do is identify and grow. And, you know, Reed and I got connected. And I said, you know, I think together we have the opportunity to serve the whole creator journey, not just each of us serving part of it. And eventually um, we uh, joined forces. So we acquired Arsenal. Uh, so we started our conversation in November of uh, 2018. We closed in January of 2019 and welcomed them onto the team. Um, yeah. And so shortly thereafter, we launched key campaigns part of our, um, but you know, the idea here is, is that one, we can help you identify and grow your audience and you can see that you're making progress, then you're going to keep streaming. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think, I think it gets, it's hard when you're streaming. Am I? And so now you have a tool that can kind of give you that visual, uh, and, and data driven approach to your content strategy. Um, you know, so what days of the week are working, what times of day are working, what games are working, uh, mm -hmm. break down stream by stream and really start to understand, you know, the kind of audience you're starting to build. And, you know, just like a small business should be data driven. I think every streamer should be data driven in, in, in their content strategy. And so uh, we let any streamer log in, uh, check their own stats for free. Uh, what we have our business accounts, and this is for people like Discord to run their influencer program. Mm. Uh, are our streamers streaming? How often are they, what games are they playing? And it helps them understand the creators that they're working with. Yeah. Uh, so very similar to our live stream business, uh, we license a lot of our technologies so that we can provide a portion of our product for free um, to creators. So. You know, we're going to have a free plan with Studio uh, for the foreseeable future. We are going to have paid plans that give you a little bit more. With Arsenal, I think it'll always be free for individual creators. We might have a couple features that allow you to uh, uh, maybe get in contact with brands, that sort of thing. And maybe that's like a little bit of a premium. But in the, we really do believe in keeping as much of it as free so you can log in as a new creator and not have to spend any money and really start to understand if you're, if you're growing or what you should do to grow. And so, yeah, that's been our, our journey with Arsenal. Uh, key campaigns is a big part of that. I think that's been a really exciting thing as well. Yeah, key campaigns are, is huge because I know that's yeah. been one of the things that, you know, we, when we were starting out, we were like, 
how are we going to get in touch with people to be able to kind of find games that we that we were going to enjoy to be able to talk to our audience with? Um, and having that connected in the back end is super helpful, I'm sure, to, to everybody involved. Also, shout out to Scarfino, who just rolled into the chat, like <laughs> literally when you summoned him via his name. Yeah, uh, I shout- do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty great. Yeah, and it's it's great. It's I've used it. It's totally cool. Um, and it means a lot to us as content creators to be able to have a place where you don't have to go out of the ecosystem to to, to do that work. So, and I, and I think it has it plays a role. Um, catch on to you from the outside looking in, and what what that is is that think about key campaigns is a good example of this. So, I am a game publisher. I upload a thousand keys into Arsenal. I say, you know, here are my eligibility requirements to get an automatic key. Mm. streamers can then just log in and they get a key it's emailed to them and instead of like as a community manager for that brand for that game publisher having to keep track of this in a spreadsheet somewhere make sure that i follow up later to see if they stream and all this other stuff um, that streamer now gets added to a report and now you've given out a thousand keys and that community manager can go to their boss and say we gave out a thousand keys Mm -hmm. 90 90 percent of the people streamed it got us this much audience uh, people seem to love it, you know, and they get to like explain the value they got out of giving away keys. And what happens then? The boss sees the value and the keys getting given away. And so they're much more likely to do it again. And so for the community, it's like now that they can measure their success in the space, they have a lot more trust in investing more into it. Mm-hmm. Um, d- you know, the data as a whole becomes a, um, as as a level of integrity and reporting to the whole process so that i as a as a small brand or a big brand now that i know that i can measure the value of investing in this space have a lot more faith in investing in this space that this is good for me this is good for my brand this is a good spend Mm -hmm. and that means that now it's bringing hopefully more economic opportunity into the space uh and that that's huge because the, the data acts as a trust mechanism for brands to be like, yeah, this is worth it. Yeah. And I think the, the biggest, you know, uh, hurdle that most streamers have is, am I growing? Am I, are the things that I'm doing working or, you know, at the time, effort and, and energy that I'm putting into, you know, going live every, every day or whenever you do, you know, is there, is there actual growth happening? And I think that Arsenal reflects that thing back in such an easy and again, beautiful way that it, that it makes all of our jobs easier, uh, being able yeah. to do that stuff. So kudos to the team for, yeah. for, for putting that together and, and knocking yeah, that out yeah. of the park. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Reed and Taylor show worked for years, building something really awesome and we've continued to improve it. Um, Noah, who was already on the live stream team, um, helped uh, revamp a lot of the design that you were complimenting. So I want to give him a shout out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think one of the reasons we brought them on board was, you know, planning to do next uh, and the role that they'll play in that as well. So it's been, it's been fun having them on the team. We're going to do some really cool stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. We had one it's question. Been a year now. What was that? <laughs> what? I didn't hear it. It's been that. a year now. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, been, but the thing is, it's like the adoption has been huge. Like everyone yeah. that I speak to in the streaming space, they're like, oh no, that's what I use to, yeah, to get that information awesome. out to people. So that's, that's <laughs> I love dope. that. Yeah. Love that. Um, before we uh, ask you the last and most important question about what is coming down the, the, the pipe for <laughs> the live stream, we had one uh, question from the chat. Uh, it was from uh, the fantastic one who asks, could live stream in the future have Twitch integration much like Mixer does? Yes. So, I mean, a couple, I, I want to, that um, obviously Mixer is part of Microsoft and Xbox is part of Microsoft. And mm-hmm. so um, that decision isn't just up to us. Sure. Um, I do, I have found that, especially in recent years, um, under Satya Nadella's leadership, Microsoft is a much more open company. Mm-hmm. And so I could see a world where working with the Xbox team, um, we're able to allow creators to choose the destination. And if Mixer is a great fit for their content, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And if if Twitch is the best choice, they're still streaming with an Xbox, and that's still good for Microsoft. And so that may be a case, but ultimately, you know, as it stands right now, it's 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 definitely a decision that's up to them. Mm. You know, we've made the case a few times that this could be beneficial, but. You know, we also respect that this is, you know, this is up to them and their strategy. So we have to, you know, you got to respect that sometimes. And, you know, if I, would, they w- I wouldn't want them telling me how to run my business. And they, I'm sure they don't like me, uh, you know, wouldn't like me coming in and telling them how to run that. But, you know, I can see both. I can see pros. 
sides. And I really hope that, um, you know, I am a big believer in choice. I think that's why live streams always remained pretty agnostic in, in yep. the platforms that we support. Um, even as we build out new features, we still support all those third party tools, not just one of them that kind of thing. So, you know, I'd like to see choice, but if it doesn't happen, I, you know, I could also have made that decision. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'll be honest, like, I think for Mixer, it is a huge feather in their cap. It is yeah, a thing that they can sure. tout in a, in a really good way. It's a thing that hell the other day I was like, you know what? I want to go to Mixer and streams a couple of things on, on, on my non spawn on me account. Um, yeah. and went through the onboarding process. And the reason I wanted to do it was because of the light stream integration stuff. Cause I was like, yeah, I do, you. I want to tech, I want to check this out in a real way and see how I can get that done. Yeah. Um, before we let you go, uh, what are some of the things that are coming down the, the pipe for, for light stream? What are the things that you're working yeah. on? Um, and definitely let everybody know where they can find your work, uh, and get in touch with you, uh, on the socials. Yeah. So for Lightstream. Uh, we're working on improvements for studio that I think tackle two things. One, uh, we are uh, bringing some much requested, much requested features to life. Uh, can't talk about too many of them, but I think people are really happy. Um, I think a big part of this first half of the year is going to be us trying to tackle a few of those. Um, we are finally going to have options to support Lightstream directly beyond just the um, our first paid plan we ever launched was the IRL plan. We wanted to start with a uh, unique community that we can uniquely provide some amazing opportunities for and some tools for. But uh, we do plan to um, release some new features along with, you know, providing a way for uh, you to support the Lightstream development. But I think I think this year we may be able to get some. Uh, some uh, some of those most requested features on the roadmap, which we do have a public roadmap uh, somewhere. <laughs> uh, I can't remember the URL off the top of my head, but we can put it in the show notes or something like that. Absolutely. Uh, but long story short, uh, we're going to try and knock a few of those out this year. And we want to give people an even simpler way to run shows like this. Something yeah. where it's literally just toggling on and off cameras. And so we, we, may, t we may take a look at that. I don't want to overpromise on that one. That'll be a big undertaking, but an even simpler interface for just going live, moving things around. Um, you know, what you see today is allows you to do just by position it anywhere you can, you know, uh, right now. But we think that there's um, a mode that could be even be simpler uh, in that respect. So I see something like that. Um, on the Arsenal side, uh, I think you'll, what's a good way to put this? Uh, we have some more work we want to do on the design side. We have more things. We definitely want to give people a more full picture on the industry as a whole. Yeah. Um, so not just on your individual stats, but, um, you know, rankings and things like that. So you see a little bit of that, but the real magic of what we're going to do um, with Arsenal is going to come out through what we think is sort of phase three of the creator's journey. And that's, you know, phase one is, you know, getting started as quickly as you can to mm -hmm. get started telling your story. Um, and then doing that in a unique way with, you know, the creative tools that we provide. And then we talked about phase two was identify growing your audience through a data driven content strategy. That's what Arsenal I think really, really gives you a tools to do. You know, phase three is how do we help you activate that to support you? Mm. Uh, and there's been a number of things over the year, I think, have tried to create economic opportunity for streamers. But they're a little too niche uh, or a little too um, uh, unusual um, or more the same in some cases. You know, monetization for streamers has really been subs, tips, donations. And you can only get subs if you're some of the, you know, the top of the top. And, you know, donations and tips only really work if you've got a decent sized audience. Yep. Um, but there are streamers with uh, viewers, you know, in the, in the neighborhood of 10 to 50 viewers that have a really engaged audience mm -hmm. who are loyal and show up every time. And uh, we think that if you could see your growth at our and then see economic opportunity, even at the smaller end of the scale where you like to stream, because not everyone's trying to be humongous. Yeah then I think uh, you'd see a lot of creators. Uh, and so what we're going to try to do in this third phase, is can we bring economic opportunity outside of that top one to 2% uh, 
and really see if we can give you a way. It's not going to be a lot of money, but it'll give you a way to make some money, enough money to upgrade your microphone, enough money to buy the next game that's coming out, yeah. enough money to invest in your in in your business, the business of what you're trying, you know, the content you're creating. And so uh, you'll see some you'll see some announcements out of tap kind of give you an idea where we're that but um, like i said we want to support the whole creator journey and i think this is the third piece that kind of creates that cycle of create content measure and learn activate your audience and then create more content measure and keep going around and around and create a little virtuous cycle of, of things that help you grow that's fantastic so, that's super cool yeah. i mean that's one of the things that you know God knows we're all trying to figure out how to make a little bit of extra dough on the side to, with right. the content that we're making. So hearing you uh, wanting to dig into that side of the fence is, is, is super fantastic. Um, Stu, thank you so much for rocking with us tonight. It was a fascinating conversation. You hit a really whole was. bunch of different cool <laughs> things. Um, and uh, we'd love to have you back at some point. Uh, and if we uh, run into each other at a, at a conference, I'll definitely give you a big old dap and say, what's up. Um, Please. <laughs> Again, let folks know where they can uh, find you on on the internet. Yeah, so I mean, you already have my Twitter on this on the on the screen. True. Uh, Light Lightstream is at Lightstream. Um, either of those are good for us on Twitter, uh, Facebook uh, as well. So um, yeah, hit us up. But the biggest place I think you could go is discordgg Lightstream, and you can have a actual conversation with me or anyone else on the team. The whole team is pretty accessible. So if you've got questions about Arsenal, I know that Reed and Taylor are on there. If you've got questions about Studio, um, our entire customer success team, with like Mitchell, Sean, Serena, Drew, uh, Seth, the whole crew's in there. Uh, and then me and the founders also hang out. So you can feel free to hit me up as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, hope to see us. Hope to see you all around. Yes, yes, yes. Please hit Stu up. Give them love. Let folks know uh, that Lightstream is doing some fantastic work and Arsenal is awesome as well. Uh, we're going to let Stu go. Hang out for the post show uh, here on Twitch. If you're listening on podcast services, massive love to you. We will see you all next week. And until then, we will say peace. What's up, everybody? How are you doing out in broadcast land, out in podcast land? Stu was fantastic. Stu was really, really dope to be able to chat to uh, and chat with uh, this week. Um, I'm very, very happy with us getting a chance to hang out with him and, and, and talk. Thank you so much, Punk. That was that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for the love right there. Um, I love doing shows like that. It's always cool to be able to bring on creators who are making um lots of fun things happen uh was that Flickr logo gets better every time i see it oh you mean the transition oh i had to speed it up because it was a little bit too slow uh, so i was working last night on after effects trying to get things together and making it work uh but thank you very much for that um abc thank you so much for coming through scarfino again thank you for stopping by and and for following and for snagging a sub from td uh chilling doing good tonight you enjoyed it thank you so much i'm very happy that you enjoyed it i'm gonna play a little bit of music in the background um while we chat for a minute um and while we chat for a minute uh recently played let's do this because this is a dope song um let's see if that works 
Um, so, oh, shout out to Stu with the <laughs> subscribing with the uh, with Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, Stu. Massive love to you, fam. Um, super appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so Stu again was fantastic. Um, Lightstream is doing some fantastic work, really cool stuff. Um, and I'm really just impressed with everything that they've put out. Like again, Arsenal is the thing that I use like monthly just to just double check and see how we're doing and getting things done. Um, so to be able to have that be a part of my tool set now is just so good. It just makes everything so much easier and, and, and easy to do. Um, one of the cool things also, uh, that I didn't get a chance to talk about last week was, um, if you remembered, we did our review of the, did our review of the Ewin chair that I have right here in the office. Um, it has been a fantastic, um, addition to the streaming room. Um, it's helped me out so much in so many ways. I have to give a huge shout out to the Ewin folks again, because they have provided not only a fantastic chair, but a fantastic, um, addition to just like the ergonomics of my life at this point, uh, which has been fantastic. Uh, so, you know, massive love and shout to them, high back chair, super plush in terms of the, the seating and the armrests and all those things uh you know giving me lumbar support all those things are like if you're a streamer and you're sitting in place for a long period of time you know just how much you need that support so uh massive love to the ewin folks um a couple other things before we we go unless you have questions in the chat one um uh some more thoughts the next episode episode three will be going out uh probably this week um still trying to figure out what the the next topic is that we're going to talk about on some more thoughts um, there's going to be some changes uh, in the next month or two, maybe to the Patreon in terms of some of the tiers. We're going to change some tiers around and things like that. So you can support at patreon.com slash spawn on me there. Um, and again, uh, we have some. Oh, I forgot to talk about this on the show. We have a really dope show next week uh, where if you are interested in AR and VR work, um, we have a we have this company called, let me double check before I mess it up. I think it, so we have, uh, the folks from crux black. That's the name of their site. So there's an AR and VR set of folks who are all POC, all black folks who are going to be trying to figure out good ways to build out and make immersive storytelling tech, um, in AR and VR spaces. So that's going to be dope. So we're going to get a chance to talk to them next week about all the cool stuff that we're going to be digging into, um, in those realms. So it's like absolutely super cool to be able to talk to them. Cause it is a thing that I am absolutely thinking about in a real way. Uh, so getting the chance to talk to them about all those things is going to be real fire. So make sure you're coming back here next week uh, for those things. Um, and before we dip again, uh, Monday was our sixth anniversary. It is the, year six of spawn me being a thing uh there'll be maybe a little a couple of small changes here and there again the format changes have already happened the kind of twitch things have already happened in that respect too um so like you know we're going to be continuing to push uh in 2020 uh and i'll keep you all posted on how everything goes thank you tdh thank you every like for real for real thank you everybody who has um continued to make this grind worth it Thank you so much to everybody who has given me kind words over the years, me, Cicero, and C, um, over the years for, for, for building this thing out. Um, uh, Punk's gonna buy me some, some drinks at the Aria Bar of Dice. I, hey, don't play, I'm down. Um, but I, but I, I wanna say this and I mean this in the realest of ways is we all set out to do something very special here at Spawn on Me. Um, it has taken lots of time, effort, energy, money, um, fights, arguments, you know, hugs, all those things over the past six years to get to this point where we're doing, uh, okay. Uh, we could be doing better as a show in terms of what the podcasting numbers look like and all those things, which means please share the stuff out. Uh, please share out the content as far and wide as you can. Um, it makes it worth it to see those numbers grow. Um, but in the grand scheme, we are continuing to do something very special here. Uh, we're continuing to make the space better. 
uh, we've made history in some places. We've broadened out the conversation in a lot of places. And I think that at the end of the day, um, the thing that keeps me coming back is knowing that we're getting to fulfill the pro- fulfill the ideas that we started off this show with, which is the spotlight people of color, talk about gaming through a, pris- a prism of blackness, and to be able to um, showcase the dopeness that is in our communities, man. And it just means so much to me that you've all stuck with us this long and have continued to, to help me build and grow this thing. Um, so I carry you all with me wherever I go. It, it means a lot. And um, it's it's dope to, to see so many people rocking with us in positive ways. Like we have such a positive community. There's so many dope folks who are varied in the talents that they bring to the table. Um, it definitely just makes me feel very, very good every day to be able to log on, to do this work, to, to, to understand that it's real, uh, that we make fun stuff. And um, to continue to want to do that and continue to want to push because uh, it's hard. It's not easy uh, doing this work. Um, massive shout out as well. Before we go again to Daniel Wilkins, who did our new theme song for Spawn on Me. Uh, and to Corey McMaster, who did all the audio uh, for our bumpers for each of the segments. Uh, massive love to both of you in the world for for using your talents for for making Spawn of Me dope. Um, and yeah, uh, again, you stop that black black Kevin. No no tears on the stream, no tears on the stream. Uh, but seriously, like folks who have stuck around and who have continued to make this this shit dope. Like, thank you. It means a lot. Um, Word. I'm going to get up out of here, uh, get working on editing the show. My wife is leaving uh, the country tonight <laughs> or tomorrow morning. Uh, so I got to go chill with her and make sure she's good. Uh, but again, must, much love to you all. Next week, we come back with Crux Black, folks. Make sure you're checking out all of our stuff on social media, YouTube. Um, trying to build up Instagram as well. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next week with the, the dope folks talking about AR and, and VR from a black perspective, which is something... I wouldn't have thought I'd be able to say uh, here in 2020, but I'm really excited about that conversation. So much love to you all. We'll see you in a bit. Mad love. Peace, peace.